these have been a, an amazing few years. Things I've never seen before in the world are happening. To je bilo osupljivih par let, stvari so se dogajale v svetu, ki jih prej še nismo videli. Tremendous amount of fear and deception. Izjemna količina strahu in prevare. Many, of course, many pastors who are concerned about their people, their sheep, are very concerned about people who are fearful. Velik pastorev je zaskrbljenih za ljudi, ki so prestrašeni. And so Clement was praying about this and he thought, you know, we really need to talk about, someone needs to talk a little bit about the end of the age, the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, vaccinations, and he began to think, well, who, who's crazy enough in Slovenia that would really be willing to get up and teach on such a subject? In Kleman je rekel, da moramo govoriti o teh občutljivih temah Antikristu in cepljenju in teh norih zadevah in kdo je to knor v Sloveniji, da bi govoril o tem. Ja, pa te moj telefon je zdonil. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Antichrist, the beast, the mark of the beast, the image of the beast. Tako da bi rad govoril o Antikristu, o žigu zveri, o podobi zveri. 20% of the New Testament talks about the end of the age. 20% nove zaveze govori o koncu časov. It was a major, major, is a major theme in the New Testament. In to je večja, pomembnejša tema nove zaveze. Yet it is either not taught at all in most churches or Foolishness is taught in many churches. Ampak bodi si sploh se ne uči o tem v crkvah, ali pa se uči neumnosti. So, PowerPoint, if you would. 43 years ago, someone handed me a book on the end of the age, the end times. Pred dobrimi 40 leti mi je nekdo izročil knjigo o poslednjih časih. And it talked about God coming back. Jesus coming back. Govorila je o Jezusovom ponovnemu prihodu. And that I didn't know why he came the first time. I'd never heard he's coming back a second time. Jaz vem, da je prišel prvič, ampak nisem še slišal, da prihaja drugič. In o tem vnebovzetju še nisem slišal. In izjemni stiski na zemlji. In o tem, da bo prišel Antikrist. V temu sedemletnem obdobju a millennial reign of Christ on the earth. In potem bo tisočletno kraljestvo. So the next thing I did was, I'm going to read the book of Revelation. Torej, naslednji korak sem hotel prebrati knjigo razodetja. And that didn't go well. In ni šlo dobar. Because in order to read the book of Revelation, no one told me this, but you have to have at least two things to be able to read the book of Revelation and understand it. Ampak noben mi ni povedal tega, da rabaš vsaj dve stvari, da bereš knjigo razodetja. The first thing is, is you have to understand and well understand the Old Testament and the Old Testament history. Prvič, rabaš poznat dober staro zavezo in staro zavezno zgodovino. Because 80% of the cryptic language and symbols found in the book of Revelation are taken directly out of the Old Testament. Ker 80% tega zakodiranega jezika v razodetju je vzeto direktno iz stare zavezo. And any Bible student knows that the Bible has to interpret the Bible. In vsi svetopisemski študenti vejo, da svetopismo mora razlagati svetopismo. We can't look through 21st century lenses and look through our newspapers and then try to interpret the book of Revelation. Ne moramo čez leče ljudi 21. stoletja interpretirati knjigo razodetja. So what happened around the turn of the 20th century, there was a very well-known and popular Bible scholar and who made study notes about studying the Bible. It's been done throughout the ages, nothing new. Na prehodu v 20. stoletje je nekdo napisal na vodila, kako brati svetopismo. We have Bible commentaries that go back 200 years, 300 years. Adam Clark, Matthew Henry, many of you probably know. To ni bilo nič novega. Imamo svetopisemske komentarje, stare več sto let, Matthew Henry in podobni. But this particular Bible scholar, whose name was Schofield, and he made quite a bit of his notes and his ideas as he went through the book of Revelation. Ampak ta biblični učenjak po imenu Schofield je naredil predsej teh komentarjev. And his study Bible became extremely popular as with his notes in it. 
in s temi zapiski je njegova študijska Biblija postala zelo popularna. This was well embraced by many, if not most of the mainline Protestant denominations. In to so, tega so se oprijel večina protestantskih teh glavnih denominacij. In the 1970s, authors start writing books. Great many books were being written about this eschatology, this end time sequence of events. In v 70-ih letih prejšnjega stoletja je bilo veliko knjig napisanih o uh, zaporedju teh dogodkov v poslednjih časih. By the time I was a Christian, for two years as a Christian, I had already read probably almost 20 books on this subject. In potem, ko sem bil sam dva let, dve let kristijan, sem že okoli 20 knjig prebral samo tej temi. But as I began to study the scriptures and as I began, as I was trained to study the scriptures in Bible school, I began to realize that I'm having more and more challenges interpreting the scriptures through this model, through this lens. Ampak ko sem preučval Sveto pismo in tudi v Sveto pismo biblični šoli, uh, sem na, le, na letu na vedno več izzival, kako to uskladiti s tem, kar piše v Svetem pismu. As Paul was going through his, uh, his uh, evangelistic mission through Asia Minor and through uh, uh, what was uh, today Macedonia, northern uh, Greece, he stopped at many churches to preach the gospel. Ko je Pavel hodil čez malo Azijo, to, kar je sedanja Turčija, je, se je ustavljal na mnogih krajih in pridigal Evangelij. When he came to a city called Berea, he preached the gospel as he did everywhere else, but the Holy Spirit makes a special emphasis in note about the Bereans. In ko je prišel v mesto Bereja, ali Beroja, je Sveti Duh dal zapisati en poseben komentar o teh ljudeh. In the book of Acts, it says that the wise Bereans studied the scriptures to verify that everything that Paul was saying was in scripture. In piše, da so modri Berejci uh, preučvali Sveto pismo, da bi preverali, če je vse res, kar Pavel govori. And we need to be wise Bereans today. In tudi mi rabimo biti kot modri Berejci donas. Especially when we touch this subject. Posebno na, na, o tej tematiki. Now there's an old... Uh, a uh, proverb that's been well known around the world. In Ester pregovor, ki je uh, poznan po celom svetu, je If I teach a man, if I give a man a fish, I feed him for a day. Če if dam, I teach a man to fish, I help him for his life, I feed him for a lifetime. Če dam človeku ribo, ga nahranam za en dan, ampak če ga naučim lovit ribe, ga nahranam za celo življenje. So as we go through some of this today, I want I want to teach you how to fish, how to study scripture, how to be a wise Maria. In ko gremo danes čez tole uh, tematiko, vas želim naučiti, kako preučvati sveto pismo, kako biti bit modri berejci. Now a thousand Bible scholars are going to have a thousand opinions on some of these things. In uh, tisoč uh, bibličnih uh, učenjakov bo imel tisoč različnih mnen o tej tematiki. And I don't think this is a subject we should be dogmatic. I think this is a conversation that we should have and we should be studying scriptures and challenging each other and always open for the Lord to show us something new. In mislim, da je to tematika, kjer rabimo uh, vedno znova preučevati in biti vedno odprti za to, kar nam gospod pokaže. In 1995, a book was written entitled Behind. It was supposed to be one book and it wind up being 16 books. In uh, leta 1985 je bila napisana tale knjiga uh, uh, Puščeni zada, I Left Behind. Ne bi bila ena sama, ampak jih je 16 potem so, raz- nastalo. This is not a Bible book, this was a novel. To ni bila uh, biblična knjiga, to je bila uh, novela, roman. But it popularized this idea of a rapture and an antichrist and a mark of the beast and 80 million copies of these books were sold around the world. Ampak je popularizirala to idejo o ant- antikristu in uh, zveri in uh, stiski in 80 milijonov teh knjig je bilo skupaj uh, prodanih po svetu. And it has shaped the theology of a great many, many millions of Christians today. In je oblikovala teologijo mnogih milijonov kristijanov danes. So let's go through some of this. It's going to be very quick and overview, but I want to give you enough scripture and insight so that you can be a wise Berean yourself. Tako da gremo uh, hitro skozi tole, uh, ne, ne bomo šli v podrobnosti, ampak za dost citatov bi vam bom dal da boste lahko preučvali to temo kot modri berejci. I don't want our journey to end tonight, I want it to begin tonight. 
Ne, ne želim, da se naše potovanje konča danes, ampak da se začne danes. And I think it's important for every believer to know what they believe and why they believe it. In pomembno je za vsazga vernika, da ve, kaj verjame in zakaj to verjame. If you believe something, I am interested to hearing that. I want to know. I want to be open. Uh, želim razumeti, zakaj nekaj verjamam in želim biti odprt. But I want to know the scriptural basis for your argument. In želim poznati svetopisemski okay. temelj za to ver- verovanje. So let's go ahead and look at the four scriptures that are in the New Testament that address the subject of the Antichrist. Next Tako slide. da dajmo pogledati te uh, te štiri citate, ki v Novi Zavezi govorijo okay. o tej tematiki. This is the only place that the word Antichrist is used in the New Testament. Samo v teh citatih je omenjena beseda Antichrist. It is by the Apostle John o tem piše Apostol Janez writing epistles to some small house churches in and around Ephesus. Ki je pisal um, pisma tem hišnim crkvam v Efezu in okoli njega. Now one of the principles of a proper biblical interpretation is the principle of content. Who is writing to whom and why? In eden od principov pravilne svetopisemske interpretacije je uh, princip vsebine, kdo piše komu in zakaj. So we know that John, who's, who took over pastoring Ephesus after Paul was killed, is now speaking and addressing some problems that he was having in house churches in Ephesus. Uh, tako da vemo, da uh, apostol Janez kot pastor govori tem hišnim crkvam. And there was some splits and problems that are not unlike today. Bili so razkoli uh, in težave, kot kar podobno do, in danes. Some number of Jewish believers left and split from these house churches and began to deny the Messiah. In eni židovski verniki so se odcepali od teh hišnih crkva in začeli tajiti Kristusa. Okay, so that's the content. That's to, what's to, being written, who it's being written to and why it's being written. To je vsebina, uh, kdo piše, zakaj piše in komu piše. Okay. First John chapter 2 Little children it is the last hour and you have heard that the antichrist is coming even now many antichrists have come that will come have come which we know that it is the last hour they went out from us they were not of us for they had not been of us they would have continued with us but they went out that they may be manifest that none of them were of us Prvo Janezova dva otroci, poslednja ura je, in kakor ste slišali, da prihaja Antikrist, je veliko Antikristov že zdaj tu, iz tega spoznavamo, da je poslednja ura odšli so od nas, a niso bili od nas, ko bi bili namreč od nas, bi ostali z nami, a niso, da bi se razkrilo, da niso vsi od nas. So who is he talking to? Komu torej govori? He's talking about these leaders who have split away from the church in Ephesus. Govori o teh voditeljih, ki so se odcepili od Efeške crkve. He says they, are, they were not of us. Reko je, niso bili od nas. They're of a different spirit. Imeli so drugega duha. We are followers of the Christ. They smo, follow the Antichrist. They deny the Messiah. Mi sledimo Kristusu, on, oni sledijo Antikristusu. Zanikali so Mesijo. 1 John 2.22 Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is an Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. 1 Janezova 2.22 Kdo je lažnivec, če ne tisti, ki zanika, da je Jezus Mesija, Antikrist je tisti, ki zanika očeta in sina. 1 John chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. By, by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and now already is in the the world. Porojanezovo 4:2 Božega duha spoznavate potem vsak duh ki prizna da je Jezus Kristus prišel v mesu je od Boga. Noben duh ki Jezusa ne priznava pa ni od Boga. To je duh antikrista o katerem ste slišali da pride. Zdaj pa je že v svetu. The fourth use by John of this word is in 2 John 1:7 For many deceivers have entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. In četrti citat je v drugem Janezovem pismu sedma vrstica v svete namreč odšlo veliko zapeljevalcev, ti ne priznavajo, da je Jezus Kristus prišel v mesu, tak je zapeljevalac in antikrist. Now let's look at this as wise Bereans. What can we deduct here? What can we conclude? 
Zdaj pa pogledajmo to kot modri berejci, kaj lahko zaključimo iz Number tega. One, there are many, many antichrists, not one, many. Prvič je mnogo antikristov. This is not an individual that's coming at the end of the world. This is now many people who are antichrists in the very letter and people that Paul is writing to. Tuk je uh, več antikristov, ki uh, delujejo kot uh, pač nasprotniki Kristusa. Right? He's addressing the present, not the future. He's talking to the generation that he's writing a letter to. On govori o sedanjosti, ne o enemu antikristu prihodnosti. By these definitions, we see that any individual religious system that denies that Jesus is the Christ is an antichrist spirit. Potem vidimo, da vsak religiozen sistem, ki zanika Jezusa Kristusa, je sistem antikrista. Many religions deny that Jesus is the Christ. Velik religij zanika, da je Jezus Kristus. Islam denies that Jesus is the God come in the flesh. Islam zanika, da je Jezus Bog, ki je prišel v mesu. Is, Islam is an antichrist spirit. Torej, Islam uh, je uh, antikristov duh. Now, a person can be an antichrist. These individual leaders that he's writing a letter to, they were individuals, yes. But there's not one, there's many. Oseba je tudi lahko antikrist. Te, o katerih piše v pismu Janez, uh, so bili posamezniki, ampak... Uh, uh, and so we see that there are many antichrists then and there has been throughout the last 2000 years of history. Tako da vidimo da je bilo veliko antikristov takrat in potem čez vso zgodovino 2000 let. There is no indication that this is talking about one person rising up at the end of the age to control the world. Zero. Ni nobenga pokazatelja iz tega da bo en antikrist ustal na proti koncu sveta. How many times has John or how many times does John use the word antichrist in the book of Revelation which he also wrote. Ampak kokrat uh, Janez v knjigi razodetja ki je tudi napisal uporabi besedo antichrist. I give you the answer. What's the answer? Kakšen je odgovor? Zero. Ničkrat. The word is never used by John. Ta beseda ni nikoli uporabljena in v knjigi razodetja. Okay? You think he would use it if if it means what we think it means? Mislite da bi uporabil, če bi uh, pomenil to, kar mi mislimo da pomeni. If, if the beast of revelation is the antichrist, you think that John will make that clear to us? Če bi uh, zver v razodetju pomenila antikrista, mislite da nam ne bi so, to jasno povedal? What has happened with the Schofield and the novelists and these 21st, 20th and 21st century scholars? They have taken several different scriptures, Old and New Testament, and they've combined them together to make it it something look like what is not confirmable with scripture. Kaj se je zgodilo čez Kofilda in te uh, romane o poslednjih časih, da so potegnil različne citate svetega pisma skupaj in prišli do enih zaključkov, ki jih ne moramo potrditi v svetem pismu. They take the antichrist that John is talking about in in these verses we just read. Vzeli so antikrista, o katerem Janez tukaj govori. They take the beast in Revelation. Vzeli so zver iz razodetja. They take the son of lawlessness or the man of sin in 2 Thessalonians. Vzeli so tega človeka uh, nepostavnosti v drugi tesaloničanom. They go all the way back to the book of Daniel and, and take out the little horn. So that's the antichrist. In vzel, uh, vse, vse do Daniela nazaj so šli in vzeli tega, uh, ta mejhen rok, da je antikrist. Now, I believe that and taught that for 20 years. Ja sem to verjel in učil 20 let. But in my heart and desire to be a wise Berean and study the scriptures over the last many years I've had to move away from these unscripturally unfounded scriptural ideas and go back to the scripture as, as the final authority. Ampak sem imel željo preučvat uh, sveto pismo in verjeti to, kar resnično pravi in sem se moral počas umakniti od takih napačnih interpretacij. Okay, so are we clear on the Antichrist? Tako da smo raščistili z Antikristom. Whenever I hear someone talk about Antichrist as a person that's going to rise up at the end of the world, I go... Kadarkoli začne, uh, slišam o človeku, uh, da govori o človeku, uh, enmu Antikristu, ki bo vstal proti koncu sveta, takrat uh, vem, da je nekaj narobe. Now let's move on and talk a little bit about the mark of the beast. But I want to talk about more than the mark of the beast. I want to talk about the mark of God, because there's much more scripture on that. Um, zdaj bi rad govoril o te, temu znamenju zveri, ampak še bolj pomembno o Božjem znamenju, ki je tudi omenjeno. Next slide. This is a credible scripture. This is now God 
speaking to Adam and Eve and the serpent at the fall. Tole je osupljiv citat, Bog govori uh, Adamu, Evi in Kači uh, po patcu v greh. He says, because of your sin and rebellion, man, you are going to labor in the fields and produce little fruit. Pravi uh, človeku zaradi svojega greha in uporništva boš uh, delal na polju in se matro. Woman, you are going to have labor and difficulty in birth and you are going to be put, placed under your husband's headship. Žena, ti boš uh, imela bolečine v nosečnosti in boš pod svojim možem. And to the serpent, God says, God Father says, and he says, I am going to put enmity, a war, between her seed and descendants and your seed and your descendants. In kač je Bog rekel, so vraštu bom naredil med tebo in ženo ter med tvojim zarodom in njenim zarodom. And out of her lineage, out of her seed, out of her descendants will come one day the Messiah. In iz njega semena, iz njega potomstva bo enkrat prišel Mesija. And that Messiah will crush your head. You will bruise his heel, but he will crush your head. In ta Mesija bo uh, te premagu, bo uh, zdrobu tvojo glavo, ti pa boš uh, ranila njegov peta. Prophetically in the Bible, headship speaks of authority. V preroško v Svetem pismu uh, poglavarstvo govori o avtoriteti. And so we see this incredible battle of these two seeds that go on throughout history. In vidno to izjemno bitko dveh semen oziroma zarodov, ki se dogaja ta prek, poz, preko zgodovine. From this moment on, Satan knows there is going to be one born in the world that is going to one day challenge him. Od tega trenutka naprej Satan ve, da bo nekdo rojen na svetu, ki bo, ga bo izval in premagal. This, this battle begins with Abel and Cain. In ta bitka se začne z Abelom in Kainom. It's a battle of worship. To je bitka čaščenja. It's a battle of who is the true God, who will we serve. To je bitka, kdo je resničen Bog. Abel provides the sacrifice of blood that God requires. Abel je prinesel daritev s krvjo, ki jo je Bog zahteval. Cain does not. Cain pa ne. He does his own thing. On naredi po svoje. He worships his own way. On časti Boga na svoj način. Which is Satan's way. Kot bi Satan. So here's the very first example in the scriptures of these two seeds at enmity with each other. In tukaj je prvi primer teh dveh semen, ki sta v sovraštvu drug do drugega. True religion and false religion. Resnična religija in napačna religija. And as you know, as we know, Cain slays his brother and kills him. In kot vemo, uh, Cain uh, ubije svojega brata. And here we see the first mark of the beast. Tukaj vidimo prvo, prvi znamenje zveri. Right? Not in not in, Gen- not in Revelation, in ne, Genesis. Never razodeti v prvi moj zasobi. The Bible says that God put a mark on Cain's head. Uh, Biblia pravi, da je Bog dal znamenje na Kainovo čelo. He was marked, he was sealed. On je bil zaznamovan, as zapečaten. As a son of perdition. As a son of perdition. Kot sin se gube. Seed. Kot satanovo seme. And this battle then continues throughout the Bible. Ishmael and Esau, uh, Excuse me, Isaac, uh, uh, Ishmael and Jacob. In ta bitka se nadaljuje preko uh, svetopisanske sveto zgodovine Izmael in Izak, Ezel in Jakob. Then we come to the Christ. Potem pridemo do Kristusa. And the fulfillment of Genesis 3:15 on the cross. In ispolnitve prve Mojzesove 3:15 na križu. Satan wounds his foot, bruises his heel on the cross and Jesus crushes his head and takes his authority and his resurrection. Satan rani Jezusovo peto na križu in Jezus mu zdrobi glavo. In this battle between the seeds, those who are of God, worship God, those that are not of God, who will not worship God, this continues all the way to the end of the age, end of the book of Revelation. In ta bitka semen, kdo bo častil Boga, kjer ga Boga, se dogaja vse do konca dobe. In chapter 12, we see this virtuous, glorious woman who shines like the sun and who brings forth V razudetju 12 vidimo to čisto krepostno ženo, ki uh, služi Bogu in uh, rodi bo, Božjega sina. And then we see the counterfeit. We see a harlot riding upon a beast, which symbolizes all of the false religions of the world. Kasneje pa vidimo ponaredek to uh, vlačugo, ki jaha na zveri in je... Uh, Zla. And so this idea of a mark or of a sealing is not the first time found in the book of Revelation. It's found in Genesis and carries out throughout the entire Bible. 
Tako da vidimo, da ta zgodba se začne v prvi Mojzesovi in se nadaljuje čez celo sveto pismo. Now what does the word mark mean or seal? It means to stamp something, right? And to make it make it a private, to make it Kaj pomeni to znamenje oziroma pečat? Um, pomeni, da označaš nekaj. Even in ancient Roman times, documents would be sealed with a, with a stamp. Tudi v starih rimskih časih so bili uh, dokumenti za označeni s pečatom. The, the Jezusova grobnica je bila zapečatena od rimskih vojakov. Vse od začetka časov vidimo, da je uh, Bog označil svoje ljudi, Satan pa svoje ljudi. So let's just go through some of these scriptures and, and, I, and I would encourage you to study them further later. Pajmo čez ene od teh citatov in jih uh, boste lahko preučvali kasneje, da se podbujem. It says in 2 Corinthians 1, 21, 22, it says that we have also been sealed and, as, and given the Holy Spirit in our hearts. V drugi Korinčanom 1, 21, 22, skupaj z vami nas utarjuje za Kristusa in nas mazili Bog, ki nam je tudi vtisnil pečat in v naša srca položil poroštvo duha. I'm just going to give you for the sake of time the, 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 the address, the scriptures, and I will encourage you to look them up and read them. We won't go through them all together. Ephesians in chapter 1, it says that we were sealed by him with the Holy Spirit. V Efežanih je ena pravi, da nas je Bog zapečatil s Svetim Duhom. In 2 Timothy 2, it says that we bear God's seal. The Lord knows who are his. V drugi Timoteju 2 pravi, da nosimo Božje znamenje in da gospod ve, kdo so njegovi. In Revelation in chapter 7, it says that we have been sealed as bond servants of our God on our foreheads. V razodetju 7 pravi, da smo bili zaznamovani kot Božji služabniki na svojih čeljih. In Revelation chapter 9, verse 4, it says uh, that, that God commands that none should be hurt in those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. In v razodetju 9.4 pravi, da, da ne, noben ne bi bil poškodovan, ki ima yeah, Božji pečak na čelo. Don't harm anything except for those who do not have the seal of God on their forehead. God Piše, commands to hurt everything else, destroy everything else. Ne škodujte uh, ničemu, uh, ničemu samo ljudem, ki so brez Božjega pečata na čelih. The very next verse is after the Bible speaks about the, 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 the beast and the mark of the beast and his number. The very next verse says in chapter 14, And I looked and behold the lamb was sitting on Mount Zion. And he went forth and, and he sealed his people with his name of the Father, which he wrote upon their foreheads. Tako je naslednji citat po pečatu, po žigu zveri, piše uh, uh, v 14. poglavju, da je jagnje uh, zaznamovalo na čelu uh, svoje ljudi. In Revelation 22, 4, it says, And we shall see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. In v razodetju uh, 224 gledali li bodo njegovo obličje in njegovo ime bo na njihovih čeli. Zakaj govorimo to ko Satanu in njegovem znamenju, uh, ne govorimo pa o Bogu in njegovemu znamenju? Živo. In fakt, this is again nothing new. If we understand what this means, we go back to the Old Testament and we see how this was understood and taught so that we can apply and interpret the New Testament. To ni nič novega. Lahko glemo v staro zavezo in vidimo, kako je bilo to takrat razumljeno in potem uporabimo to v novi zavezi. And so we, we will read this one. Let's go ahead and read Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 8. Dajmo prebrat uh, peto moj za sovo 6, od 4 do 8. And as he's finding that here, it's passage we are familiar with. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. And to je znan odlomak. Ljubi gospoda svojega Boga z vsem srcem, so dušo in so močjo. And go ahead and read on to verse 8. Te besede, ki vam jih danes zapovedujem, naj bodo v tvojem srcu. Ponavljaj jih svojim sinovom in govori o njih, ko bivaš v svoji hiši in ko hodiš po poti, ko legaš in ko vstajaš. Priveže si jih za znamenje na roko in naj ti bodo začelni na kit med očmi. So we're to take God's commandment, God's word, and we're to bind them on our arm, our hand, and on our forehead. 
naj bi vzel Božjo zapoved, Božjo besedo in jo privezal za znamenje na roko in na uh, načelo. Hand speaks of service. Roka govori o služenju. The forehead speaks about our minds, our thoughts. Uh, čelo pa go, govori, uh, predstavlja um, naše this, misli. This mark is not a physical mark. It was never a physical mark in the Old or the New Testament. To znamenje ni uh, zunanje, znamenje, zunanje žik in to ni bilo nakol zunanje, znamenje niti v Stali, niti v Novi Zavezi. Now, many legalistic Jews didn't understand that, so they made a little, little boxes and they would, they would put scripture parchment in the box and they would literally hang it on their foreheads in eni legalistični židje tega niso razumeli so naredili mehne škatlce z uh, listki kjer so bili citati in so si dobesedno obesali to načelo eh, go to israel and look at orthodox jews today and you'll still see this to this day in če gledate kakšne ortodoksne žide danes še vedno lahko kaj tazga vidite they, they, they think that they're obeying the torah in Deuteronomy chapter 6, but they don't understand it. That's not what God is saying. Mislijo, da na ta način uh, obogajo Toro, uh, peto Mojzesovo knjigo, uh, ampak Bog ne pravi tega. You can dangle a box in front of your face, but that doesn't change and renew your mind. With Ti si lahko obesa škatlico na svojo čelo, ampak to ne obnovi tvojega mišljenja. In Exodus 36, the high priest was to wear a crown, and on his forehead was stamped, Holy to the Lord. Um, v eni od Mojzesovih knjig piše, da je veliki duhovnik imel kron, krono, na kateri je pisalo Sveto Gospodu. Another example is in Ezekiel chapter 9, is, is speaking about the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians. Še en primer je v Ezekielu 9, kjer piše v, o uničanju iz Jeruzalema po Babiloncih. And Ezekiel is given a vision, and he sees an, an angel sent forth by God, in Ezekiel vidi vizijo, vidi angela, kaj ga je Bog poslal. And the Lord says to the angel, now go through this wicked, wicked people of mine who have rebelled and go find those that are weeping and crying because of the sin and mark their heads. In uh, uh, Bog naroča angelu, da naj gre med, med njegove uporniške ljudi in zaznamuje tiste, ki okajo zaradi greha. Okay. So God marks those that he says will not be destroyed by Babylon. In Bog označi te ljudi in pravi, da jih ne bo Babilon uničil. We see this throughout the Bible. We see it again in the book of Revelation. To vidimo preko celega svetega pisma in spet v knjigi Rezodetja. God marks and seals his people with the Holy Spirit. Bog označi svoje ljudi sa svetim duhom. So there's no question who's are his. Tako da ni nobenega dvoma, kdo je čigal. And there's no question who, who's are the seed of the devil. In ni nobenega dvoma, kdo je iz semena hudiča. Now we come to the famous Revelation chapter 13 uh, verse 16 speaking of the mark of the beast. Zdaj, zdaj pa pridemo do slavnega razodetja 13 ka govori o žigu zveri. And the word here used for mark is the Greek word to engrave. It's, it's the root word in which we have in English character. In ta beseda v originalni grščini pomeni uh, kokar ugravirat in v osnovi pomeni karakter. Those who take the mark of the beast are taking the character of the beast. Tisti, ki sprejmejo žig zveri, vzamejo, prevzamejo karakter, naravo zveri. This is not and never was interpreted in scripture as something physical, it's spiritual. To ni nekaj, kar je bilo kjerkoli v svetem pismu um, uh, raz- predstavljeno kot zunanje znamenje je duhovno znamenje. If you're a believer today, you have been sealed. You have a you have God's name, God's stamp and the Holy Spirit that has that has been placed upon you. Če si danes vernik, imaš znamenje od Boga, pečat svetega duha je bil dan na te. And those who take on the mark of the devil take on the character of the devil's seed. In tisti, ki prevzamejo žik uh, zveri prevzamejo karakter uh, njegove narave. That's why Jesus is talking to some of these seeds, some of these Pharisees, some of these religious leaders, and says, your father is the devil. devil. Uh, zato je Jezus uh, rekel enim tem religioznim židom, vaš oče je hudič. You are children of the devil. Vi ste otroci hudiča. You are the seed of the devil. It goes all the way back to Genesis 3, 15 at the fall. Vi ste seme hudiča, ki gre vse nazaj od 1. Mojzesove 3, 
pat cel grih. Okay? And so we see this terminology of the mark and the and the name, right? This applies both to God and to the and to the enemy, to both seeds. Koda vidimo to izra, izražanje uh, žik je i na strani Boga i na strani hudiča. Now everything I have said in the last 30 35 minutes, I believe is very solid scripture. I'm prepared to Vse, kar sem rekel v zadnjih 30 minutah, je zelo uh, trdno utemeljeno na Svetem pismu in sem pripravljen to na konferenci učiti. Zdaj pa še malo govorimo o tem, kaj verjamem, da je zver. In veliko različnih mnenja o tem. Tega ne bom učil dogmatično in mislim, da ni prav, da kdorkoli v tem učil. Right Ampak povedal vam bom, kaj trenutno verjamam. In če lahko pridete do mene z več zgodovine in citati, sem odprt. So I began to realize that if I don't understand the Old Testament scripture and history of Israel, and I don't understand new century, first century, and history in general, I won't be able to understand any, I have no chance of understanding who the beast is. Pač prišel sem do zaključka, da če ne razumem zgodovine stare zaveze in zgodovine prvega stoletja, nimam šanse, da razumem pravilno, kdo je zver. So I've spent many, many years studying history. Zato sem veliko let pravčval zgodovino. And then studying Hebrew history. Tudi hebrejsko zgodovino, izraelsko zgodovino. And especially the book of Daniel is all. Daniel is the most apocalyptic book of the Old Testament as the revelation is in the New Testament. Posebno knjigo Daniela, ki je najbolj uh, apokaliptična knjiga v Stari zavezi, tako kako kar je razodeti v Novi zavezi. Okay, so I'm going to present to you what I believe and I'm going to challenge you as wise Bereans to go study this for yourself. In vam bom predstavil, kaj jaz tvarjamem in vas izval, da sami preučujete sveto pismo kot modri berejci. So is the beast an antichrist or the antichrist. Tore ali je zver ta antichrist. A world dictator that will rise up at the end of the age. Svetovni diktator ki bo ustal na koncu dobe. No. Ne. Because I go to the Bible and I go to the book of Daniel to find out what a beast is prophetically. Ker lahko grem v sveto pismo v knjigo Daniela in vidim, kaj je zver preroško. And Daniel was given many apocalyptic end time visions that, that the book of Revelation draws from. In Danielu je bila dano več apokaliptičnih uh, vizij, iz katerih Janez vleče uh, v razodetje. And he had Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had a dream in which Daniel is given the dream and the interpretation which he gives to the king. Uh, Daniel je imel uh, uh, razlago, uh, ki jo je dal ne- Nebukadnezarju za njegovo vizijo. And he saw a series of beasts. In vidu je celo serijo zveri. And the one beast is as lions and, and leopards and bears. Each one of them symbolized a kingdom that was to come. In te različne zveri, leopardi in medvedi, uh, vsaka od njih je Sim, simbolizirala eno kraljestvo, ki bo prišlo. And now we look back at history and we know exactly who those kingdoms were. Zdaj lahko pogledamo nazaj v zgodovino in točno vemo, katera so bila ta kraljestva. And he tells King Nebuchadnezzar that after you the next kingdom will be the kingdom of the, of the Persians and the Medes. In pravi uh, Daniel Nebuchadnezzarju, da za teboj bo, uh, bo prišlo kraljestvo Perzicev in Medica. And when the Persians are defeated, they will be defeated by the kingdom of Greece. In ko bojo oni poraženi, bo, jih bo nasledilo kraljestvo Grčije. The leper. After Greece, they shall be defeated by the, by the iron kingdom, which it was Rome. Grčija bo poražena sa strani železnega kraljestva, ki je bil Rim. And after Rome, there would be a dispersion of kingdoms into smaller kingdoms, ten kingdoms. In za Rimom bo razpršitev tega velikega kraljestva na več majhnih. He was giving another vision, which was the same sequence of events, but it was a different, it wasn't animals uh, and beasts, it was a statue. In potem je uh, imel še eno vizijo, ki je govorila o istih stvareh, ampak niso bili, uh, niso bili uh, zveri, ampak kip. And so he tells King Nebuchadnezzar, you are the head of gold. 
In pravi Daniel na bok Nezarju, ti si, ti kralj si glava zla, the zlata. The chest of the statue is the meat Persians. Uh, to uh, oprsje so medici perzici. And the loins is going to be Greece. In uh, ta spodni del Bogrčija. And the legs of iron will be Rome. In uh, noge iz železa bojo Rim. And then Rome will break apart into ten toes mingled with iron and clay. In uh, Rim se bo razbil na deset prstov, ki so pomešani uh, Železo pomešano z glino. Yeah, right now, I'm not, this is, none of this is my opinion, I'm just simply quoting to you the Old Testament. Nič od tega ni moje mnenje, jaz vam samo citiram staro zavezo. Okay, now let's look through the lens of history and we saw what happened to the iron legs of Rome. Rome was not defeated by other world dominations like, like the prior kingdoms. Rome was never defeated like that. Uh, zdaj pogledajmo te noge iz železa. Uh, Rim ni bil nikol poražen uh, na ta način, kakor so bila kraljestva pred njim. And we see the ten toes represent ten kingdoms that were mingled with iron and clay so they would never once again form into one unified kingdom. Teh deset kraljestev majhnih uh, je bilo iz železa in gline, ki se ne morata mešati, to pomeni, da se ne bojo nakol več združili v eno veliko kraljestvo. And Daniel sees, the next thing he sees in his vision is a rock that comes from heaven and strikes and shatters the statue and out of this stone grows a mighty mighty mountain Mount Zion the in, kingdom of god in uh, potem naslednja stvar ki jo Daniel vidi v viziji je ogromna skala ki se otrga iz gore in razbije vsa ta kraljestva in potem nastane iz nje ogromna gora gora Sion the next major kingdom that's going to come is going to be the kingdom of God. Naslednje večje kraljestvo, ki bo prišlo, bo Božje kraljestvo. Many have tried for 1500 years to create another empire like like these ones that we just spoke about, but it never came to pass. They couldn't do it. Veliki je poskušal eno velik en velik imperij formirat um uh, v zgodovini, ampak jim ni uspel potem več. Many many dictators tried. And up until recent times Hitler tried to dominate the world in a thousand year reign. Uh, velik diktatorjev je poskušal, Hitler je poskušal to. Okay. But the next kingdom that will come is going to be the kingdom of God. E, počakam. To je baterije zaje. In naslednje kraljestvo, ki bo prišlo, bo Bože kraljestvo. Okay. Alright, so, so do you see what, what, what these images are, what a beast is? A beast is, let me, let me say it very clearly, a beast is not a person. Tako da vidimo zdaj jasno, da ta zver ni oseba. It is a kingdom or a government of some sort. Ampak, ampak je oseba oziroma neke vrste vladavina. If there was any doubt in your mind, we find the conclusion, we go two chapters to chapter Revelation chapter 17. Če imate še kakšen dvom v umu, gremo lahko v 17. And, poglavi and razvedja. And the angel tells John, let me give you some, let me explain the mystery to you. In angel pravi Jane, zunaj ti razložim skrivnost. This happened to Daniel. An angel says to Daniel, let me explain some of this to you. Okay? To the je, leopard is Greece. To je uh, tudi uh, angel razložil Danielu, ta leopard je Grčija. So here we have the book of Revelation, an angel telling us the mystery of what the beast is. So there's in, no question. In v razodetju tudi angel razlaga, uh, kaj je ta skrivnost zveri. It is not a person. Ni oseba. It is not an antichrist ni, dictator. Ni en antichrist diktator. He says the seven heads of the beast sits on seven hills or seven mountains. Pravi, da sedem glav te zveri sedi na sedmi gora. And even today, 2,000 years later, I think everyone knows what, what city that represents. In tudi uh, danes vemo, uh, ka, katero mesto to predstavlja. And the angel Rim. says, it is also not just seven hills or mountains, but it is also seven kings. Uh, angel pravi, ampak ni samo sedem... Two meanings. Two meanings. Two, two meanings, right? Don't worry, just move on. Okay, then he says, Dva then there's ten horns on those heads, and those ten horns are... Ten kingdoms that are yet to come. They're not yet come. They will come. Potem pa je na te glavah deset rogov, ki so kraljestva, ki še pridejo. Okay? So there's no question about 
in my mind, what the beast is, because the Bible tells us, the angel tells you the mystery of what the beast is. Tako da, o mojemu mišljenju, Nino Ben ga dvoma glede tega, kdo je zver, kar sveto pismo jasno pravi. Does that make sense? A je smiselno to. Okay. So then, what is the beast? Kaj je potem zver? We see two beasts actually coming out from the land and the sea in, the, in Revelation chapter 13. V bistvu vidimo dve zveri, ki prihajata iz zemlje in morja. Okay. And they are given the, the dragon. Who do you think the dragon is? In uh, uh, zmaj. Kdo mislite, da je zmaj? Satan. Satan the dragon gives this beast both of them great great power. So let's just look at the highlights of what the the, the Bible describes here. Satan ta zmaj da obema zverima veliko oblasti. So that we can look for this in history and see if this is perhaps already happened. In zdaj lahko pogledamo v zgodovini, če se je to mogoče že zgodil. If it's never happened in history then it, then we can deduce that it's a future event. Če se še ni zgodil v zgodovini, pa lahko sklepamo, da so to prihodni dogodki. This beast is given global large scale influence. Tej zveri je dan uh, glo- dan globalno vpliv. The this beast both of them because the second one is like the first one and has all the power of the first one. In ta druga zver je kot prva in je dana moč prve zveri. And these beasts demand to be worshiped as God. In te zveri zahtevajo, da se jih časti kot Boga. Okay. It's not a person, to ni oseba, se, an antichrist in the, in the future, right? This is, these are systems, right? Kot antichrist, systems. ampak so sistemi. And they speak blasphemies against the true God. In govorijo bogokletja proti resničnemu Bogu. These two beasts have the power to control individuals from buying and selling or, or, or practicing a trade. In te zveri dosežejo, da je preprečeno enim ljudem kupovati in prodajati. They create images that must be worshipped. In ustvarjajo podobe, ki jih je treba častiti. And they greatly persecute the church and the people of God. In zelo preganjajo crkov in Bože ljudi. Okay, now, Paul, John, this revelation is of Jesus. Who is he writing to? He's writing to the who? To razodetje je o Jezusu in... Pisano je komu? Pisano je sedmim crkvam v Mali Aziji, ki je danes tukaj. Kaj je vsebina? They are under Roman domination. Oni so pod rimsko dominacijo. And they are being persecuted and suffering immensely. In izjemno jih preganjajo in trpijo zaradi tega. And there's much more suffering to come. In še veliko več trpljenja prihaja. And Jesus is encouraging his churches continue to worship the true god don't don't be deceived in worshiping the false god don't in, fall away because let me show you the end of the story in jesus uh, ih hrabri uh, še naprej častite resničnega boga ne it za lažnivim bogom pokazovam vam kakšen je konec spodne. at the end of this all the wicked will be punished and the saints will rule and reign with god forever and ever na koncu vsega bo zlo kaznovano in sveti bojo vladal na veke in veke na zemlji. The kingdom that is coming will one day dominate the earth with righteousness, joy and peace. Kraljestvo, ki prihaja, bo nekega dne vladalo na zemlji s pravičnostjo, mirom in veseljem. So again, this is the content of what what's being written. It's encouraging believers to not give up in persecution and see the glorious ending that is awaiting those that are faithful. Torej, to je vsebina. Hrabri, uh, razodetje hrabri vernike, da ostrajajo v veri in da pričakujejo dober razplet na koncu. Okay. This book is undoubtedly written within the content of the first century church who would understand and have the historical understanding of Old Testament to understand exactly what all of this means. In uh, nedvomno je pisano to uh, v kontekstu uh, crkve prvega stoletja in oni so razumeli pravilno, kaj to pomeni. When they were talking beast, they know exactly what they were talking about. Ko je, Pisal o zveri so oni točno vedeli, o kom govori. Ko Janez opisuje zver, mi jim je bilo jasno, o čem govori. Ker to je Janez pisal v rimskem zaporu in uh, njih otu, da njegovi ječari razumejo, o čem piše. If he, if he that this is talking about some future events 2000 years in the future, he wouldn't be worried about the Romans reading this. He can read all you want. Take it home to mama. Če bi uh, on pisal o enih dogodkih, ki se bojo zgodili čez 2000 let, uh, 
se ne bi ukvarjal s tem, da zakrije vsebino pred rimskimi ječari, lahko delajo s tem, kar hočejo. So this is what I believe the two beasts are. To pač verjamem, da sta dve zveri. There's only two beasts that I can think of as I study history that match up almost perfectly to this description. In v zgodovini prepoznam dva primera, ki se skoraj popolnoma ujemata s tem opisom. The first beast is imperial Rome led by its emperors. Prva zver je cesarski rim, ki so ga vodili prvi cesari. The second beast that followed is the papal, papal Rome or the rule of the popes. Druga zver, ki je sledila, je papeško cesarstvo, ki je prevzel to oblast. And so when we look at history, especially as Constantine comes to power in the third century and he moves the seat of the Roman Empire to Constantinople, which is today Istanbul. In v zgodovini vidimo, ki je potem Konstantin prišel in predstavil glavno mesto cesarstva v Konstantinopel, danas in Istanbul. He gave over the Western Roman Empire to the Bishop of Rome. In je predal zahodni del rimskega cesarstva rimskemu škofu. In potem je še velik zgodovine, o kateri bi lahko govoril v tretjem, četvrtem stoletju, pa nimamo zdaj časa. In the Roman Empire, as I said, was never destroyed, it simply disintegrated into ten tribes, ten kingdoms with the ten different kings. In ni rimsko cesarstvo ni bilo nekoli zares uničeno, samo razpadlo je na deset različnih kraljestva. This is where the Italians come from, the French, the Spanish, the English, the Germans, 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 Nemci. These ten tribes come out of what was in the Roman Empire. Teh deset plemen je išlo od tukaj. This is the ten toes that Daniel saw 2700 years ago. To je deset palcev na nogi, ki jih je Daniel videl stotine let nazaj. These are the ten kings that in Revelation chapter 13 or 17, this is the ten kings that are to come. They're not here yet, but they're going to come. To je deset kraljev, ki v razodetju še niso bili, ampak prihajajo. In so we see that both of these kingdoms historically had incredible power and global influence. Tako da vidimo, da oba ta dva kraljestva, ki smo jih omenili z razodetja, sta imeli zjemno moč in vpliv. The second beast to this day has global power and influence. To this day. Druga zver ima do današnjega dne globalno vpliv. The current Pope, coming from this papal system, the Vatican is its own country, with its own land, in its own military, in its own ambassador. It is literally a city-state. Sedani papež ima tudi svojo državico in, ja, sorry. Now, let me stop for a minute here, because I don't want anyone listening or watching this to think that I'm speaking against Catholic believers Many who love God and who serve God. Ker želim, da ne bi kdo narobe razumel, da govorim proti katoliškim vernikom, ki mnogi ljubijo resničnega Boga. I do believe they should come out of this system, this papal system. Verjamem, da bi morali pridati iz tega papeškega sistema. But God loves them as much as He loves you, me or anyone else. Ampak Bog ljubi njih, tako kot kar ljubi kogarkoli od nas. What I'm speaking of and speaking against is the system. Govorim pa proti sistemu, ker je antikristov sistem. In ko se pogledamo cesari, ki so prišli Nero in drugi, so dejansko zahtevali, da se jih časti in tisti, ki jih niso častili, so jih umorili. Ustvarili so podobe, ki jih je bilo treba časti. To ni novo. To je šlo vse nazaj do Babilonskega kraljestva, kjer je Nebukadnezar zgradil kip, ki ga je bilo treba častiti in tisti, ki ga niso so bili obsojeni na smrt. 
papal system and the emperors, both of them demanded, they claimed divinity and in, claimed and demanded worship. In tako papeški sistem kot te rimski cesari so uh, trdili zase, da so božanski in so zahtevali češčenje. I think the seven churches of Asia Minor reading this can say, oof, yeah. See, it's happening right now, right in front of our face. A mislite, da so lahko teh sedem crkva v razodetju to prebrali in rekli, ja, to je res, to se točno Nero, zdaj dogaja. Nero burns Rome to the ground and blames it on the Christians, who are then ferociously... Ne, Nero je požgal Rim in potem kriv dozvalil na kristijane in uh, zverinsko obračunal z njimi. Both of these systems had the power, financial power, to demand you 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 can sell you cannot sell you can buy you cannot buy if you don't bow down to our system you're done oba dva ta sistema sta imela moč da zapovesta ti lahko kupuješ in prodajaš ti pa ne ker ne upoštevaš teh pravil both these systems have persecuted god's people tens of millions of people have died in the, since the time that book of revelation was written till today oba dva ta sistema sta preganjala in ubijala kristijane Desetine milijonov ljudi je umrl čez njih od some, knjige razodetja do tej. Some estimates are high as 100 da celo do 100 milijonov ljudi je bilo uh, umorjenih, mučenih čez ta dva sistema. And if you don't know this history, I would highly encourage you to, to go back and study the history of the, of the planet Earth for the last 2,000 years, especially the, the, uh, the inquisitions and the things that took place in Europe. 14, 15, 16 centuries. In če ne poznate zgodovine, vas podbujam, da preučujete zgodovino posebi zadnjih uh, 2000 let in uh, inkvizicijo uh, od 14. stoletja naprej. Go back, go back to the Fox's Book of Martyrs that talks about the persecution under Imperial Rome and the Emperors. I see the unbelievable things that God's people suffered. Poglejte Foxovo knjigo mučencev, ki govori o preganjanju in mučenju v času rimskega cesarstva, neverjetne stvari. And so as we go from chapter 13 on to chapters 14, 15, 19, 20, over and over again, we see this, this, this mark of the uh, beast and the image of the beast and the image of the beast being worshipped. This is a theme throughout the rest of the book of Revelation. In ko gremo od 14. poglave razodetja naprej, Vidimo, da je ta, uh, to čaščenje zveri uh, tema v vseh teh poglavih. Right? So the image is being worshipped. Ljudje častijo podobo zveri. Who's the image of God? Kdo je podoba Boga? The Bible says Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Sveto pismo pravi, da je Jezus podoba nevidnega Boga. Right? First, uh, Colossians 1.15, who Jesus is the image of the invisible God. You can't see God, but you can see his image. Kološano me ena pravi, da je Jezus podoba nevidnega Boga. Ne moraš videti Boga, vidiš pa lahko njegovo podobo. Right? You can't visibly see the Roman Empire, the beast, but you can see its image. Ne moraš videti uh, podobo te, uh, tega rimskega cesarja, lahko pa vidiš podobo zveri. So these emperors and these, these popes were the image of the system, the beast. Tako da te cesarji in papeži so bili podobe sistema zveri. And throughout the there's the revelation Jesus is telling his, his churches be prepared for this because they're going to require you to worship them. In preko uh, razodetja uh, Jezus poroča crkvi bodte pripravljeni ker bo jo zahteval od vas da častite njih. Don't take the mark of the beast. Don't take on the character of the beast and begin to worship and serve worship and serve another god, a false god. An antichrist spirit. Jezus pravi, ne prevzeti karakterja zveri in začeti uh, v svoj um in s, v svoje služanje in začeti uh, služati lažnemu Bogu. Does that make sense? A je to smiselno? This, has been, this is a mystery that has been troubling many people for many decades. Years, to je skrivnost, ki je mučila velik ljudi velik desetletji. But I believe as we apply the proper principles as wise Bereans and study the scriptures and let the scriptures interpret the scriptures, suddenly these mysteries unlock. Ampak verjamem, da ko uporabno prave principe preučvanja Svetega pisma in ga preučujemo kot modri Berejci, se te skrivnosti odklenajo. So from Genesis chapter 3 all the way to the battle of Gog and Magog at the end of the Bible, we see the battle of the seas and it's a battle over worship. In vse od prve Mojzesove tri do razodetja bitke Goga in Magoga vidimo to bitko semen 
koga se bo čestil. Some are marked with God in his name on their forehead. Eni so zaznamovani od Boga z njegovim imenom na svojih čelih. And there's others who are marked on their forehead in their thinking, in their minds, in their character and they worship an antichrist spirit. In drugi so zaznamovani od uh, uh, hudiča z njegovim mišljenjem in čestijo podobo zveri. I believe this is precisely what the early church understood. Verjamem, da je prva cerkev točno to razumela. I don't believe God gave a, wrote a, a letter to the seven churches so that they would not understand that the truth would be locked up for 2000 years. Ne verjamem, da bi Bog poslal pismo tem sedmim crkvam in da bi bila resnica, kaj res to pomeni, zaklenjena za 2000 let. And we're out of time here, so I, I, I will only very briefly mention the number of the beast. Znam, uh, um, časa nam je zmanjkala, ampak na kratko bom število zveri omenil. And what's the number of the beast? Kaj je Everyone zveri, kdo ve? The infamous, the famous, the well-known 666. Število 666. Okay, and, Paul's, and the writer uh, John says it's a mystery. If you get smart enough to unlock it, you'll You'll be able to figure this out, guys. In uh, pisatel Janez pravi, uh, to je skrivnost, ampak če boste pametno preračunali, boste razumeli. When I, when I started to really break away from this, my experience, ko sem, uh, yeah, you know, this whole eschatology, I went and I said, I want to study and see what those before the 19th and 20th centuries taught on it. So I went back to all of the scholars, but all the way back to the first century church. Ko sem začel preočvati to temo, sem hotel zvedat, kaj so verjel tisti pred 19. stoletjem, 19. 20. stoletjem. Never was the word rapture used. Nikoli ni bila uporabljena beseda v nebo vzetje. Nowhere in the New Testament is there a seven-year tribulation. Nikjer v Novi Zavezi ni sedemletne preizkušnje. Nobody believed that the beast of Revelation was an antichrist, or the antichrist. Ni verjel, da je zver v razodetju antichrist. In fact, you know what the refer- reformers believe? Calvin and Luther, you know what they believe? Veste, kaj so uh, re- reformatori verjel, Luther in Calvin? They believe that the beast is exactly what I just told you. Verjel so, da je zver točno to, kar sem vam povedal. Generally speaking, not everyone has agreed at every point, but generally speaking. Nasplošno, ne moramo se strinjati v vsaki točki. And if you take the Hebrew numbers and in the Greek, they, there is no numerical system A, B, C, A, B, S, A, N, A, D, The number and the letters can be used interchangeably. In če pogledamo hebrejsko abecedo, uh, imajo drugo logiko, številke in črke se lahko izmenoma uporabljajo. And when you replace these numbers, these letters with numbers and add up to 666, in če uh, zamenjaš te črke sa številkami in jih se šteješ, dobiš 666. Probably, I believe this is probably, I'm not going to say it is, but I believe, and much of the history, historians, early historians believe, that when you add this up in the, in the language, in the Greek, this is speaking about Nero Caesar, Caesar Nero. Verjamem in to velik zgodovinarjev pravi, da ta številka govori o cesarju Nero. Okay. Uh, and ever since then to this very day there's there's a thousand different people authors books being written on who the who the mark of the beast is who the number of the beast is and it's coming 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 soon in vse od sekret je bilo na stotine in tisoče knjig napisanih uh, o zveri in uh, so, števili, številki in da to prihaja k malo so let's go ahead and conclude with with uh, with the probably one of the most important parables that Jesus interprets on the end of the age is found in uh, Matthew chapter 13, I think I have the slide up here. Yes, I do. Verse is good. I'm not going to read the parable. I'm going to read the interpretation. Dajmo prebrati to priliko Jezusovo o poslednjih časih. Ne bomo prebrali tega Matej 13, ampak bomo razlagal tega povedal. This is now the end of the age. This is Jesus talking about the end of the age. Jezus govori o koncu te dobe. And you'll see here very clearly why both seeds and tares, which wheat and tares, both have to be properly marked because they will be, at the end of the age, separated. In uh, tukaj jasno vidimo, zakaj more biti in pšenica in ljulka jasno označena, ker bo sta ločena na koncu dobe. I'll read it very quickly in English and then you can read it in Slovene. And he answered and said unto them, He who sows the good seed, remember the battle of seeds back to Genesis 3? Yeah, he's talking about those seeds now. This is Jesus talking about this. And he tells us the interpretation of this. The good seed 
is the sons of the kingdom. Is there any question in anyone's mouth? This is right out of the mouth of Jesus. He is telling you who the good seed is. Jesus okay. im razlaga priliko ljulki na nivi in jasno pove. Then the tares, he says, are the sons of the wicked one. This is the other battle here. This is the ones opposing God. Da so dobro seme sinovi kraljestva, a ljulka pa sinovi hudiča, tisto drugo seme. Who sowed this wicked seed? Ah, it's none other than the devil himself. Kdo je zasejal slabo seme, noben drug kot hudič. The harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are the angels. Žetel je konec sveta, žanci pa so angeli. Therefore the tares will be gathered up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. Kakor torej pobirajo ljulko in jo sežigajo v ognju, tako bo ob koncu sveta. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out all of his kingdom, all things that offend and those that practice lawlessness. Sin človeko bo poslal svoje angele in pobrali bodo iz njegovega kraljestva vse, kar je vzpotiko in tiste, ki ravnajo nepostavno. And they will be cast into the furnace of fire. Vrgli jih bojo v ognjeno peč. And there will be a wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Tam bojo, ki in škripanje zobmi, takrat bojo pravični svetili, kakor sonce v kraljestvu svojega očeta, dor ima všesa najposluši. Do you want to see this harvest? It's recorded in the book of Revelation chapter 14. Če želimo videti to žetev, je zapisana v razodetju 14. Okay, and there's, there's bowls, there's trumpets, there's seals. Every one of them begin and then end by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's different views of what's going to happen at his coming. They all end the same way. The Lord comes back in judgment. In so različne uh, predsta- predstavitve tega sporočila so čaše in trobente in uh, vse, vse to se konča se sodbo. So you see from the beginning God says I'm going to mark my seed, the true seed devil, and you will go, go ahead and mark your wicked seed and in the end it will all be settled in final judgment. Od začetka vidimo, da je Bog zaznamoval svoje seme in hudiče zaznamoval svoje seme in oboje je ločeno na poslednji sod. And when the Lord comes back, he will come back and gather his sealed. In gospod pride nazaj, bo zbral svoje zaznamovanje. The sons of the kingdom. Sinove kraljestva. Will be gathered together to rule and reign with him. Zbral jih bo, da vladajo in kraljujejo z njim. Now I've just told you in one hour and seven minutes probably would take us what's taken me four decades to understand. V eni uri in sedmih minutah sem vam povedal, kar sem rabil, štir desetletja, da sem dojel. And again, I'm not here to try to be inflexible, dogmatic, and say, this is the truth, you must believe it. Rather, I'm trying to give you another perspective. In nočem biti dogmatičen glede tega, da pač tako je, kakor sem povedal, ampak vam želim da drugačno perspektivo. Not to give you a fish, but to teach you how to fish and study scripture. Ne, da vam dam ribo, ampak da vas naučim, kako uh, loviti ribe oziroma proučvati sveto pismo. So, with that said, are there any questions? Torej, z vsem tem, a so kakšno vprašanje? Um, who do you see as the false prophet and what about the um, harlot? Koga in vidiš Revelation. kot uh, lažne preroke in kot vlačugo v razodetju? Yeah. So, uh, the, the, the harlot is riding the beast. Um, we know the beast is. Ta vlačuga uh, jaha na zveri. And I said, go back to Genesis. You see in Revelation 12, this virtuous, beautiful woman, the true church, the true remnant of God, and you see the counterfeit, which is, which is depicted as a harlot. V razodetju 12 vidimo to krepostno, čisto ženo, ki služi Bogu in ponaredak vlačuga. Ko preklinja Boga in Boga. To predstavlja vse lažne religije na svetu. Ki preklinjajo resničnega Boga. Nadal on? Kaj pa te dve preroški priči, ki umreta v razodetju in sta obojeni od mrtvih in svet je osupo? To answer that, we have to, we have to first answer the question, who are the two witnesses? What, right? Okay, again, when we look at Scripture and let Scripture interpret Scripture, we see that the, that the two witnesses, who are the two witnesses of the God? It's the, it's the Old Testament and the New Testament. 
Okay, it's the it's the prophets, uh, and and uh, and so this is how Jesus depicts it and speaks about these these witnesses: Moses and Elijah. There's always two, but the law uh, and uh, the prophets. Uh, Old Testament, New Testament is another perspective that some will argue, and that's probably the most best interpretation. Now, to get into the being put to death for three days, we have to go back in history, which I'm willing to do, but without getting into too much detail, this takes a little bit more time to unpack. But I believe it is found in history. And if you want to sniff around in the right area, look at the, look at the uh, French Revolution, where the Word of God was taken and, and burned, and for the first time, Europe turned away from God and propagated as a nation a atheism. And now atheism from the French Revolution is now spread out of, out of the French Revolution. It is now pretty much permeated all of Europe, America, Canada, and the Western world. What is taught in our schools and universities today? No God. Where did that come from? The French Revolution. Okay, and then and the Bibles were burned. And, and so there's, there's a lot of history there that needs to be looked at. I'm not saying 100%. And once again, I, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a seeker. And I'm open, and I will stand pretty strong on a few things, but but not some of these controversial things. Uh, yes, but to the ubistvo uh, is Ephesians 2.2, ne? Uh, se mi zdi tako zelo dober opis Antikrista, ki piše, da je poglavar sil v zraku. Če je kažem komentar. The Prince of the Air. Yeah, that's a statement. Man. Was that a question or a statement? A prashanya or a statement? Uh, yeah, ta upisa, ne? Poglavar si v zraku, a ne? Uh, se mi zdi, da je tako zelo točen upisan, uh, določen, da antikrist. Če, Če je kašen komentar... You're talking about 2 Thessalonians, right? Chapter 2? Ne, Efežanom. Efežanom 2.2. Prince of the power of the air. So this would be descriptive of Antichrist. Yeah, ultimately, ultimately, who is the ultimate Antichrist? Satan. Do je končan Antichrist? Satan. Now he's got principalities and powers and a whole thing under him, but he's the ultimate Murderer from the beginning, Jesus said. Ima svoje vladarstvo in oblasti pod sabo, ampak on je ta največji morilec, ki je zaspravil. He is the leader of this world, fallen world system. On je voditelj tega padlega svetovnega sistema. He is the leader of all, in the source of all false religions. On je voditelj vseh lažnih religij. And he's described different ways in the Bible. In različne načine ga sveto pismo opisuje. Okay, anyone else? Sure, sure. Who's crazy enough to come and stand up and teach on this subject? Who? Ampak še kaj poveste na začetku ste rekli o vaccination, o cepljanju pa o tako imenovanem rapture. Okay, so the question, this is a big question of vaccinations. And this is some of the reason why Clement invited me and Carol invited me and pastors are struggling with this because so many people are, are associating the vaccination with the mark of the beast. Cepljanje je veliko vprašanje, zato ker toliko veliko ljudi v temu času povezuje to s znamenjem zveri. Yeah, and before the, before, uh, the vaccination was credit cards. Pred, pred, pred cepljanjem so bile pa kreditne and then, kartice. And before that they were going to put a chip in your arm. Pred tem so govorili, da bojo dal čip v tvojo roko. In to se ne neha, to jutro bo kaj drugega. But as we look at reality through the lens of scripture, we see that this is and never was and never will be a physical mark. We very clearly look at what the spiritual mark is. In če gledamo realno sveto pismo, je jasno, da to ni bilo nakolj mišljeno, da je zunanje znamenje. So if you feel you should get vaccinated, get vaccinated. Ko da če rabaš biti cepljen, se cep. If you don't want to get vaccinated, don't get vaccinated. Če nočeš se cepat, se ne cepat. Okay, that's your, that's between you and God. To je med tabo in Bogom. But I will tell you with great certainty, these vaccinations are not the mark of the beast. Ampak lahko vam z veliko gotovostjo povem, da ta cepljenja niso znamenje zveri. It may be a good idea, there may be a bad idea, there's lots of science and debate, but it's got nothing to do with scripture. Lahko so dobre, lahko so slabe, velik znanstvenikov debatira različne stvari, ampak nima veze z žigom zveri. 
So rapture. How many times is the word rapture used in the Bible? Na prej, nebuzete, kokrat je v nebuzete omenjeno v Svetem pismu? Zero, you know the answer. Zero. The, bop, the word doesn't exist. Uh, ta beseda Now, ni v Svetem pismu. It's talking about 1 Thessalonians, where Paul, where Paul is saying that the Lord is going to return. Govorimo o 1 Thessaloničanom, ko piše, da se He bo gospod vrnil. Heaven will empty, everyone that's ever died will come back with him. Te, ko so umrli prej, bojo prišli z njim. And we, which are alive on the earth, will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. In mi, ko smo živi, uh, bomo skupaj z njim odneseni na oblakih v zrah. 1 Corinthians 15, Paul teaches virtually the same thing. He says, look, behold, I should explain a mystery to you. 15 približno isto pa vali. There will be those alive on the earth when the Lord returns. Da bodo eni, ki bojo živi na zemlji, ko se Gospod vrne. So, that's the catching up. To je to v nebo vzetje. Okay, I prefer to use the word resurrection. That's the promised resurrection. The Jews were looking for the Lord to return and to resurrect the dead. Jaz imam rajš besedo o ustajenje, ker tudi židje so pričakovali ustajenje, Jezus prihaja, da bo budu mrtvi. So though the word rapture is not used, the word resurrection is used all the time in the New Testament. To beseda v nebo vzetje ni uporabljena, ampak ustajenje je pogosto v novi zavezi. And in fact, there's going to be two resurrections, the resurrection of the righteous and the resurrection of the wicked. Ustajenje pravičnih najprej in potem ustajenje krvičnih. And I've taught on that extensively before. O tem sem že veliko prej učil. Anyone else? Ja, I would ask about 2 Thessalonians, vprašal bi o drugi pismu Thessaloničanom, ki pravi o tem človeku v nepostavnosti sinu pogube. Tukaj v bistvu je specifično vprašanje glede prihoda našega gospoda Jezusa Kristusa, se pravi to prvo ustajenje, kot kar si zdaj razložil in našo združitev z njim, in pravi, da se ne pustite tako izbegati in vznemiriti, ker gospodov dan ni še nastopil in preden nastopi mora priti odpad in se razodeti človek nepostavnosti sin pogube. Ta se bo vprv in se pozdigni na vse, kar se imenuje Bog in se vsedo v Bože svetišče. Torej, kako pravilno razumeti ta odlomk v kontekstu vsega? So there, the Bible, the the Bible, Jesus is taught. He wrote First Thessalonians, encouraging people the Lord is going to come back. Va prvi Thessaloničanom je Pavel hrbril ljudi, da gospod prihaja nazaj. Thessalonian church got so excited, they say he's going to come back any day now. Quit your job, don't go to school anymore, and he's going to come back. In pol so se na udušal tok nad tem, da so nehal hodati službo, v šolo, kar koli delati in čakal na Jezusa. So Paul, you know, he writes second Thessalonians to try to... In Pavel je napisal druga Thessaloničanom, da pojasni, kako je prav to razumeti. There are things that must take place before the Lord. It's not, don't be, don't, go back to work. Se pravi, morja se stvari zgoditi, Prej, da ni Jezus pride nazaj, pej te nazaj dele. Ne bo se to zgodil jutar. Nekaj stvari se mora prej zgoditi. In pravi v tem poglavju, da o enih teh stvareh smo govorili, ko smo bili skupi. Ni hotel napisati tega v odprtem pismu, ki bi ga poslal. Ker so bili pod rimskim ujetništvom. Lahko te usmrtijo zaradi stvari, ki jih napišejo. Tako da kontekst tega odlomka je mora biti nekaj, kar so v prvem stoletju razumeli, da se je dogajalo. In je to term, in je grek je to term, man of sin, or can be translated man of lawlessness, or son of perdition. In omenja to človeka nepostavnosti sina pogube. The exact word is used with concerning Judas Iscariot, the betrayer who betrayed Jesus. He was called the son of perdition. Exact same word. Ista, točno ista beseda je za Juda Iškariota, ki je izdal Jezusa uporabljena sin pogube. Okay. So this is probably something to do with imperial Rome and the empire and the uh, emperor's system, something to do with what was happening there, though it's not clear because Paul says, you already know this, we've talked about this. Tako da verjetno ima to opravka z cesarskim Rimom, ampak ni čist jasno, Pavel pravi vse veste o tem, smo že govorili, ki smo bili skupi. But this is one of the verses and chapters that 
that some of these modern writers today say, well, that and John's Antichrist and uh, uh, Beast in Revelation, these are all talking about the same person. That's nonsense. Ampak to pač moderni avtori so vzeli ta odlomk in razodetje in to povezali, da to govorijo o sebi Antikrista. And again, it's like, it's like trying to teach you to fish, not just go back to commentaries in the 16th, 17th centuries or the reformers and go back and see what they believed these things meant. Želim vas učit kako pravilno preučvat sveto pismo. Pajte tudi reformatorje gledat njihove komentarje v 16. stoletje. Vse imate brezplačno na internetu. Pogledajte, kaj so oni učili. And if you find one ancient writer that says Second Thessalonians is talking about the Antichrist. Please give me a call and let me know. Če najdete kakšnega starodavnega avtorja, ki pravi, da druga tesaloničanom sin pogube govori o človeku Antikristu, me pokličte, ker hočem to vedeti. I don't believe it has a future meaning and fulfillment. I believe it had a first century meaning to the 12 churches of Asia. Ne verjamem, da je to imel en predstavljeno pomen za prihodnost, ampak se da ni pomen za crkve v času, ki je nas to piso. Anyone else? Zaključimo. Še kakšno vprašanje? Se pravi, če sem prav razumil, ni zdaj enega antikrista, ki bo zavladil svet. En človek, in kdo ne bo sprejel šeši šest, bo uničen in ne bo mogel iti v šopni centr. So prav razum, tega ni, ne? Tega ni. A se prav ustajene crkve, da bo crkva šla gor, ljudje brez jev se bojo pa na zemlji z antikristom. Tega pa tudi ni več. No. Tega tudi ni več. Ne. When Jesus comes back, again, we're talking about, we're talking about the resurrection and the coming of the Lord. Govorimo o ustajenju in prihodu Jezusa nazaj. The Bible uses many terms like the day of the Lord. Sveto pismo uporablja izraz gospodov dan. Or the Lord's day. Dan gospoda. He describes this as coming like a thief in the night when you least expect it. In pravi, da bo prišel kot tat v ponoči. Jesus says, we will come back like a thief in the night. To je Jezus pravi zas. He gives the parable of the ten wise and the foolish, five foolish. V priliki o desetih, modrih in desetih. Be prepared neumnih devicah. Bodte pripravljeni pravi. In Thessalonians, where we were just reading, Paul right before that says that the Lord is not going to come back and when everyone is saying peace and safety, that's when you need to be careful. Not when the world's at war. In Pavel v drugi Thessaloničanom pravi, da takrat, ko vsi govorijo mir in varnost, takrat rabite pazat, biti budni na Jezusa v prihod, ne takrat, ko so vojne. In Peter tells us what happens when the Lord comes back. They all do. 60, 70, 100 scriptures that talk about what will happen at the day of the Lord. In to je velik citat, ki govori o tem, kaj se bo zgodil na gospodov dan. When the Lord comes back, he will destroy the earth. Ko on pride nazaj, bo uničil zemlj. He will judge the earth. On bo sodil zemlj. Not with water, but with fire. Ne z vodo, ampak z ognjem. Like the days before Noah, so will it be the coming of the Son of Man. Kakor bo v času Noeta, bo ob prihodu Sina človeka. And God destroyed all life on the planet, except for the righteous, in judgment. In Bog je uničil vse življenje na zemlji razen pravičnih. And in the end, He will destroy all living things on the earth, except for the righteous. In na koncu bo uničil vse žive stvari na zemlji razen pravičnih. So Peter says, in 2 Peter, 2nd chapter, he says, Now concerning the coming of the Lord, brethren. Peter pravi v prvom pismu, glede gospodovega prihoda. People are mocking, saying, when will this happen? Eni ljudje se naročujejo, govorijo, kak da bo to se zgodilo. People says, God is patient, he doesn't want, he wants to save as many as he can save. Ampak pravi, to je zato, ker je Bog potrpežljiv in hoče, da se jih čim več odreši. Comes back in judgment. That's it. Ka on pride se sodbo je konc. Ne? The day of salvation ends when the Lord comes. Dan odrešitve se konča, ko gospod dan pride. And he goes on and he says, he uses two terms. He says, the day of the Lord, so that everybody knows what he's talking about. That he wrote to. In ko je pisal o gospodovom dnevu, so vsi takrat vedel, o čem govori. He will come, then Peter says, and he will come like a thief in the night. In Peter pravi, prišel bo kot tat po noči. Every believer knows what he's talking about. Vsi verniki so vedeli, o čem je govoril. Because Jesus taught on this, Peter taught on this, Paul taught on this, everybody taught on this. Jezus, Pavel, Peter, vsi so učili o tem. Now listen to me, he says that. When the Lord comes in the day, in the day of the Lord, he is going to melt the earth in fervent heat. Even the elements will melt. 
In ko gospod pride, bo stopil zemljo v tej goreči vročini. Like his first judgment, nothing, nothing will, not, will be living at it. He will destroy everything by the brightness of his coming. Kot v prvi sodbi uničil bo vse z svetlostjo svojega prihoda. We will be caught up in the first resurrection. Mi bomo vzdigneni v prvem ustajenju. And then later, the wicked will be resurrected in the second resurrection. In kasneje bojo te nepravični uh, obojeni v drugmo ustajenju. So this idea that Jesus comes takes his church, which he will do. Pač ta ideja da Jezus pride in bo vzel svojo cerkvo je resnična. He promised that he says, he says don't, don't be discouraged before the cross. Don't be discouraged. I'm going to prepare a place for you so that when I come back I will take you with pravo me. bom prostor za vas in ko pridem nazaj vas bom vzel kjer sem jaz. And eventually he will return again with his church the bride and John sees that when he sees the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven to the earth filled with the saints of God. In uh, na koncu Jana spravi da Jezus bo prišel s svojo nevesto s, s, s crkvijo na zemlo uh, ja. Ne? And so to answer your question, the, the idea that Jesus will come, take his church, and all these people will be left behind, that, that, that just not scripture. Tako da ta ideja, da ko bo Jezus vzel svojo crkvo, da bojo vse te ljudje ostali na zemlji, ni, nima temelja v svetem. If you can find scripture on that, please share it with me. Če najdete citate o tem, mi prosim, sporočite. Great question, and I, I teach on this extensively in, in, in videos and stuff that you have available here. I taught it here. Yeah, you, yeah. there's two groups, some, some people historically for 2,000 years who believe in a literal reign of Christ upon the earth over the nations. Uh, so, ja, eni ljudje verjamo, da bo to tisočletno kraljestvo dobesedno, kjer bojo kralji vladali na zemlji. And then there are many believers and scholars of the years who believe in a millennial, which means that it's it's not a literal reign on the earth. Eni pa verjamo, da je to je pač tisoč kot uh, duhovna beseda, ne to besedno v letih, da se mi. I believe he will rule and reign on the earth and be, and because there's hundred scriptures that talk about him ruling and reigning on the earth, especially in the Old Testament. This is what the Jews were looking for. Ki je citatov, ko govori o tem, da bo on vladu na zemlji, do besedno, in to sto židje verjeli. Why, why did the Jews at the time of Jesus, why were they so convinced that the Messiah would come, crush the Romans, and rule and reign on the earth? Ker zakaj so židje toliko pričakovali, da bo Jezus, ki je prišel kot Mesija, da bo uničil Rimski imperij in vladu na zemlji. The reason they believe that is because all of the prophets prophesied so for hundreds of years that that's going to happen. Zato, ker so na let vsi preroki to prerokovali, da se bo zgodil. It just didn't happen in his first coming. Ampak to se ni zgodilo v njegovem prvem prihodu. Because he came as the Lamb of God. Ker je prišel kot Božje jagne, da reši problem greha. When he comes back next, the next time, he's not coming back as Savior, he's coming back as Lord bo prišel King. ne kot rešitelj, ampak kot kralj, kot gospod, ki bo vladal in kraljeval na zemlji. Vse. Tako da vesel se, hvalilo, Jezus prihaja, ti se boš imel fajn. Ko bo on prišel, bo šel z njim v, v nebesa, pa bomo skupi na zemlji z njim. Glavno, cel žur je pred nami. Ampak naš fokus mora biti zdaj, kako proslaviti Jevsa na zemlji, hvalilo, kako hoditi z njim vsak dan, kako zdaj on čez nas deluje in Bog ima ful dobre stvari v planu. In če še ne poznaš Jevsa, bi ga rad spoznal. E, svetu pisem prav, kdor v srcu veruje, da ga je Bog obudil od mrtvih in ga zusti prizna za svojega gospoda, bo odrešen. Se pravi, kako pridaš v Bože kralestvo? Verjem v svojem srcu, da je Jezus živ. Amen. Verjem, da on je na križ, odnesel tvoj greh, on je te umrl, pa ni ostal tam. On je tretji dan ostal od mrtvih in je dones živ. In vse, kar moraš narest, je, da rečeš, Jevs, jaz te sprejemam za svojega gospoda. Se pravi, naenkrat si dal svoje življenje Jevsu in verjamaš, da si odrešen za to, ker je on plačil ceno za te. Ne, ker si ti toliko dober. In za to, ker to verjamaš, mu zdaj predaješ, da je on tvoj gospodar. Nisi več ti gospodar, ni več kodič tvoj gospodar. Ni več dnar tvoj gospodar, Jezus je tvoj gospodar. Amen. In če bi kdorkoli rad to naredil, lo, da ona skupi, 
z mano mološtom molitev, predanje življenja Jevesu. Mogoče kdor kot, če gledaš to na kameri danes, kar je bilo molitev, molitev skupaj z mano. Dajmo še vsi skupaj molit za te, ki bi radi danes to sprej. Molitev je pogovor z Bogom, sprav to ne bo med tabo in med Bogom. Če nočeš molit, samo pa zapril oči in pač razmišljal, če imar koli hočeš, ampak dajmo molit vsi, ki verjamamo, skupaj s tem, ki bi danes radi sprejeljev se. Danes prejem boš malo si samo predstavljal, da te Bog posluša, da je Jezus v tvoji sobi, da je Jezus dele čaka na tvojo odločitev. In samo reči, Jezus, jaz verjamam vate. Verjamam, da si ustal od mrtvih. Hvala, da si plačil ceno za mene. Da si odnesel vse moje grehe na križ. Jaz te zdaj sprejemam za svojega gospoda. Prid zdaj ti v moje življenje. Aleluja. Jaz sem zdaj tvoj otrok. Amen.